right, so we're going to get started here. Um, today's class is some tips and tricks in helping you guys manage and navigate in your uh, DocuSign. Um, so we want you, to guys, you guys to be able to save some time and stay organized. Uh, which will also, again, save you time and frustration. So there's a couple uh, tricks that I've learned over the last, uh, you know, several months of using DocuSign and in some international training. So some of these you might know already, and some might be new to you. I do highly recommend if there is a trick you want me to go back over, just let me know. Either type in the chat box or... Um, you can just, uh, you know, chime in and say, show me that again. So number one, uh, emailing docs to people who need to see documents, but they do not need to sign documents. Um, a lot of people want to send, um, agreements of sale over to seller's agents or documents over to an attorney. And that's mostly utilized for viewing purposes only. So I just want to let you know that you do not have to create a envelope to do that. A lot of people are still creating envelopes, placing their signed docs in there and then um, sharing them with the said participants, um, even though they don't need to sign. So easily you guys can just email from within DocuSign, say this is your signed offer and you want to send that on over to the seller's agent. So instead of creating an envelope and going through that whole process, what you can do is just check mark it. All right, and right here is an email feature. All right, so we can just hit email and you would put in the person's email. All right, now you can uh, change the message here um, and you can use this little box to slide out so you can see what you're writing. Right, and then all you have to do is hit send email. And that will, uh, a secure link to your documents is being sent. And then when you get that over in your email, and it might take a few minutes to come on over. It is like a monsoon at my house. I'm hoping our power does not go out or anything like that. Um, but a link will be sent to them where they can then uh, download and view the documents. Okay, so you don't need to create an envelope and go through the whole room participants and viewing the documents and all that stuff if there's no signatures needed and you're just basically sharing. This also helps eliminate the fact that you don't have to download it to your computer, then attach it to an email. Okay, so you can email straight from here. You can also do this um, inside of the document. So if you have this open, and we hit uh, actions here. Uh, right here is email. Okay, and then you can do the same thing as well. Okay, now again, that's if it's an already signed document um, or just a document that you want them to just view um, only. Now, Question. yes. Mm -hmm. So if you, um, if you, what is the downside of, of doing it? It's just the fact of creating an envelope versus just sending it as an email if you only want somebody to view it. Yes, it's far less steps. If I were to do it the, the way that most people are doing this, I would go into envelopes. I would do a new envelope. I'd add, you know, name my envelope, pull in from room docs, just say that was the one I wanted. All right, then I had to add recipient. I'd still use maybe pre-tag roles, or if it's somebody exterior, then I'd have to type in their email address, give them only needs to view or receives a, co receives a copy. If you're going to do this, like, um, along with the signature section, uh, receives a copy is better than just needs to view, because um, then it's not reliant on completing the envelope. Um, sorry about that. Um, so... That was about 
seven different clicks I had to do, then I would have to hit next and send and save. So one, one to two clicks over seven to 10 clicks is much better, I think, than um, uh, doing the envelope. So again, all you would do is just click on the doc or multiple docs if you want multiple docs. So if I wanted to send everything here, all right, then I would do email, email, put the email in and send. Many less clicks, right? All right, so um, just in case you didn't know, there was that one. Um, also, just since we're in here, um, a lot of us don't uh, may know that we have a uh, fax. So in your DocuSign inbox, uh, and we've reviewed this before, you have a DocuSign email, which you can email to, and a DocuSign fax that you can have people fax to this number. This is specifically for you. Uh, no other account has that number. And those documents come here into your inbox. Now, alternately, uh, you actually have the ability to fax out. So if I come back into uh, where, did the, where did Betty Byer go? I need less space. So if I want to fax something, now obviously you're only going to be faxing completed documents or documents that don't still need fit signatures um, unless they're wet signing. Uh, you can either right click over the document, come down and you hit fax. Right, and then you put the person's fax number in there, and then you can put the recipient's name, and then you hit send. Also, you can do that uh, with multiple docs. Uh, let me just double check. Not up here anymore. Um, so if you want to do it with multiple docs, I believe you have to combine them and then fax them into one document or just fax them individually, okay? But you can fax out from your DocuSign account. A lot of people only thought we can only fax in to the DocuSign account, all right? So you can use utilize faxing, which is a really great option. Especially, I know uh, in Jersey, you guys have a lot of um, attorneys that still utilize fax. Um, and some of your HUD properties and things like that, they're still using some fax stuff. So that's always a good option. Okay, the other thing is, now this is gonna be a game changer for you guys, um, is moving documents from room to room. All right, now I know that this is the normal error that we get if we want to move a document. So we have either a form, and we try to use the move and we want to send it to a, uh, a different room, just say we're going to send it here, hit move, and we get uh, cannot be moved out of this room, okay? Also, same thing with your sign docs, all right? If we use move, we want to send it somewhere else to a different room. Oh. <laughs> And maybe they just opened that part up. Emily, if you're on this call. <laughs> um, it looks like they just allowed us to move that, <laughs> which is nice. You can also do, if you want to keep the original copy here in uh, this particular room. So say this room is for a buyer, um, but we got an, um, we put in an offer and then the person, the other agent sends back the agreement of sale to you uh, using your DocuSign email or fax or something like that. And now the completed agreement of sale uh, for, with the seller stuff is here, but you want to move it to a different um, oper uh, room so that it can be connected to a different opportunity. All right, so we can uh, copy to as well. So we're going to do copy and we're going to do copy to an uh, active room. We can choose another room and hit copy. And that has been added to the new location without taking it out of here. 
So if we want move, and I'm kind of like really surprised that it's letting us do that as of right this minute. Let me see multiple docs. Move <laughs> um, to an active room, Billy Byerson, and move. And so we could manually move those from room to room, which is great. Um, or we can also do a copy to. Copy, copy to active room, Billy Byerson, copy. All right, now see these are greened, signed, check mark. Now when we're over in our room that we copied to, if I come into Billy Byerson here, All right, so the ones that we did copy to, they came in as PDFs. And the ones that we did move, they're still showing as the green check mark signed. Now, technically, they're all flat PDFs. So um, if you tried to um, you know, put signatures on this, this is no longer a form and fillable. Uh, but you could do some strike throughs, initials, text boxes, things like that. So if you do the move, they stay with the green icon. If you do copy to, they get the new red PDF icon. Okay, so that is moving your documents from room to room. Now, this also will help you if you were uh, like many others and you accidentally created rooms that were not attached to command. So if you accidentally created a room or a room got duplicated somehow, um, you can easily move to the correct room so that you can pull it straight into command. All right, this is really gonna be great for your dual agency. Um, so you don't have to download all of your docs and re-upload them up into the new room to pull them over into the listing or buying opportunities. Uh, you'll just either move or copy to, which is the better bet. Uh, that way you keep both in each uh, room. All right, so that is moving your docs. Um, also, I want to open up one of these. Let me see. I think this is more. All right, give it a second, it's gonna open up. Okay, two pages in here, yep. And then we're gonna do edit. And then you're just gonna be clicked on either one of these. So say the first page is correct, but this page needs to be flipped. We're just gonna check box it and then flip as needed. Okay, so up and down flip or rotate. Okay. All right, so that is uh, flipping and rotating documents. That way you guys don't print it out. Don't rescan all your stuff. If one page is flipped the incorrect way, um, just utilize that page flipper. So again, any PDF can be flipped. Um, just make sure you do actions, edit, and then you'll have your options down here and you just select which page you wanna flip, okay? So that is flipping and rotating docs, all right? And um, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is, uh, we talked about faxing into your inbox and then be able, being able to fax out. And um, something else we know is that we can uh, email in to our inbox as well. So this is my email, uh, DocuSign email. But a new feature is that we can also include the email conversation. All right, so if I'm looking at my email, all right, and this is an offer for 123 Demo Lane. Um, there's my offer attached. All right, so if I want to forward this offer, 
uh, into my DocuSign. I can do forward. All right. And in my to section, I'm going to add my DocuSign email, which I already saved as a contact, which is the best way to do that. Um, and then if I wanted to go into a specific room, instead of just the inbox, um, what I would need is the room ID. So if I come back into my Betty Buyer, this is the one I like. All right. Right here is a room ID. So we need to highlight that. All right, and it's going to come right into this section here into my main room docs folder. And I'm going to edit the subject. All right, and this is where I'm going to put in that ID. Now, also what I can do is I can put in um, a hashtag PDF, okay? And what this will do is not only take the PDF that's attached, but it'll also turn the email conversation into a PDF as well. Now, um, a lot of this is not conversation. This is going to be um, images and stuff, but I do have some email conversation in here. So it'll turn it into a PDF. So if you have important information uh, in that particular email with the um, the agreement of sale attached or some sort of negotiations attached, you can easily do this and you're going to hit send and we're going to give it a few minutes because that was a lot of emails um, in there. But that will come on over into my room uh, docs section. All right. And just so you guys know, you are being notified anytime anything comes in through fax or email uh, in this system, and you're notified via email, uh, the one that's on your account, uh, when stuff uh, comes into your DocuSign. So if you're not getting those notifications, you guys can always um, make sure that your notifications are turned on in your settings up here in your preferences okay I have a question yes okay so um as it relates to the rooms you may have told me this a while back but i'm just trying to get clarity if i have if i have multiple offers do i have to have a room for each no no so if if you're representing the seller and you have multiple offers come in is that what you mean? Yes. Okay. So you would you don't have to create multiple rooms. Same thing with a buyer. So if you have a buyer and you guys are putting in offers on all different type all different properties, you know, just hoping to get one, you do not have to create a new room. What you do is you create a new folder. So here you can see I have a couple different folders. So I would create folders um, using actions, add folder. And then this can be for, you know, the other property. And until you have one that's fully accepted and you know you're going to go with it, you might have four or five different offers going on right here. And once, you know, whatever offers get rejected, so say uh, this main street got rejected, um, I can just hit the three dots and hit delete. Now what it's going to, it's not going to delete my, um, document, it's going to throw this document down here, okay, and uh, just delete the folder. So that way you still have that original offer for 123 Main Street. If you need to go back to it for some reason, um, they come back to you and say, hey, we are re-reviewing your offer, um, you know, maybe can we negotiate, um, all right, and it looks like I might have gotten that. <clears throat> However, but when you get ready to upload in command the checklist, all of that stuff is still going to show up, right? You have to be able to separate. You know what yeah, so for. that that's another great reason, Lisa, why you want to do the individual folders. 
So you see I have assigned docs here. So for a listing, basically every time you do a listing, you're going to have all your room docs. Maybe you'll mm -hmm. have some supporting docs. But okay. create a signed docs folder. And every time a doc is signed, put it up into okay. this folder. Like this is the final version of everything. This is going to be forms and incomplete versions and all kinds of stuff, right? Um, so that way when you're over here in uh, command, let me actually just go into my Betty Buyer real quick so I can show you that exactly. Hold on. Come on, Betty. Betty, where are you, Betty? Oh, there she is. So when I go to upload the documents here, and I'm choosing DocuSign, instead of being all in one mass folder, I'm going to choose my signed docs folder, and there are all my signed docs. So they're not getting mixed in with all of the main docs. Like that's a lot of docs. And even though they say PDF behind them, these are the forms. And we don't want to pull in forms, right? Because they're going to be blank or not signed. So we want to only pull from our signed docs and then we can pull in from there. Now, as you saw, I also have my one, two, three demo lane. So if you delete a folder, which I had the main street in here, it will no longer show up here. So that's why either multiple offers should each get their own folder. Okay. Or okay. if you're working with a listing and you just want to separate your forms and your completed docs, do a signed docs folder. That's what I would do. That way you don't confuse yourself because everything will be in this giant root folder and none of these are completed docs. And that's what I was experiencing. And the only way I could tell is if it said sign, signed. If yeah. it had two sign signs behind it and it was green. But it, yeah, that is time consuming. It, it is time consuming and you might make a mistake. Um, and like you said, some of them, uh, they'll say that signed here. But if it's a really long like name, like if this name went off of the page, you might not see that it said signed. You know, like this one. It might say signed afterwards, you know, and we just can't see it. Um, so okay. that's why use those those folders, and that way you know you're only pulling your completed docs uh, in from the signed folder. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, so right here was that offer for one, two, three demo lane. Give it a second. So that just went ahead and popped right into there. All right. And so uh, that came in from my email. All right. And then also, let's see, did it pop in yet? It might be taking a while for the email portion to pop in. Uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, it looks like it might be just taking a little while. For the email section to come in um, but you do get a um, option um, and as you can see here I'm getting an error that my my um, images didn't come in which is okay um, a lot of us have those email signatures that have images attached whether it's your social media icons your headshot things like that so you might get a error notification for that. So don't worry, uh, your doc should, any attachment should still go in there, um, but uh, your images will not, because it'll take PDF um, through the forward, uh, but no uh, PNGs. Okay, all right, so where were we? Um, Okay, so the other thing I want to talk about is where you can manage your envelopes. So most of us are just going into um, each room and going into the envelope section, right, and then managing from within here. You can take a look at all of your envelopes that are currently active and all in one place. 
um, and that's in your e-signature portion. So if I hit this little drop down um, and I hit switch to e-signature, all right, so technically DocuSign is two different platforms. It's the e-signature, which has been, you know, been around for a decade. Um, and then the Rooms platform, which is a newer platform for DocuSign. Um, and that is the um, transaction management part, you know. Um, but here, if we hit Manage, this is going to be all of your um, envelopes that you have in play. So whether um, you have something here in your inbox, a uh, sent box, all right, drafts you can see. So those are your draft envelopes, anything that you have deleted, okay? So this is where we can see all of the envelopes that we have in play without having to figure out which room and then go to the envelopes. Um, so here you can just jump straight to all of your envelopes. Now this is gonna be important um, when it comes into uh, the next portion of what I'm gonna talk about, which is in-person signing. All right, so you can do in-person signing um, in this DocuSign platform, um, but the order in which you do it is gonna be a little bit different. Okay, so if we come on back to our room, all right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to prepare the docs as normal. Okay, and now I'm just going to use one doc for today just so we can get through it fast. All right, so I'm going to take um, said doc. Um, let's say this one. All right. And I've already filled it out. And now I want to um, go ahead and so I'm going to look at my notes so I don't screw this up. <laughs> I'm going to create an envelope so I can either go to envelopes and put this document in, or I can just check mark it and use the little pen for DocuSign. That's going to create an envelope for me. All right. Make sure you guys are changing your DocuSign envelope names. So this is the affiliate services disclosure, we're gonna say, um, one, two, three, uh, Betty Buyer. Okay. And we're going to add our recipients in the envelope and we're using that pre-tagged roles. Now this is a seller doc, but I'm just gonna use Betty. All right, so here is Betty. All right, now I am the listing agent, we're gonna say, and I'm gonna choose me. Now one thing you're gonna see is here I am, and here I am, uh, so which one is me? So if you go ahead and click on one, all right, and you hit add selected, you can double check which one is you by clicking on this little um, picture, right? This little per gray man, all right? And um, we wanna make sure that we are not the version of us that is uh, a buyer agent or seller agent role. We wanna be agent owner, okay? So that's who we wanna be. We're gonna hit add selected. Okay, so make sure you are you have that agent owner option. Okay, and there's a Betty Buyer. All right, and we're gonna have uh, we're not gonna do an email subject because we're gonna do an in person signing. So instead of hitting next, this is where it gets different, guys. We're going to hit save and close. Save and close. Okay. There it is, ASD, one, two, three, Betty Buyer. And um, hold on, it's a crazy downpour here. And my husband's worried that our skylight's gonna leak, <laughs> sorry. All right, so now what I wanna do is I wanna switch over into my e-signature portion and I want to, 
um, go into that manage envelopes like we just were in. So if I were come over here, switch to e-signature, and we're gonna do manage. Okay. And give me a second. I might just take a minute to pop in here. Um, we're going to click to drafts because that's where um, it is right here. Betty Byer, Katie Joe. I'm going to click on that one. Okay. And um, we're going to go ahead and hit continue. And this is going to look familiar. But this is the part also where we're going to make a change. And instead of needs to sign, uh, and we're going to hit this um, needs to sign section, right? And we're going to do in-person signer. So in the envelope um, in DocuSign, in um, the rooms, you don't have this in-person signer option. You only get it while we're here in the e-signature section. So we're going to do in-person signer. And it's going to say, who is the host? Obviously, I, I'm the host as the agent. So I'm just going to click on myself. All right. We're going to hit next. And it's going to make sure that we have, uh, we still can review the document, right? And then we're going to go ahead and hit send. Now, this is a document that I need to sign. So it's going to have me sign. All right. It's going to bring me in. I'm going to hit continue. I'm going to sign. Okay. Finish. All right. I don't need to do that. All right. So now that's going to be in your inbox and we still need Betty to sign. So we're going to click on it, sign, and this is where we get the alert security request from sender all right katie joe remmel katie joe remmel assigned you as the host for an in-person signing session for betty buyer um now it's saying pass the controller over the of the signing session to the host signer ask the signer to enter any required auth authentication um we're just going to say skip this message in the future because we don't need to see that we're going to hit start says, Katie Joe, pass the controls over to Betty Byer. Hit continue. This is when Betty Byer will be signing. Uh, she does need to check this little checkbox that says electronic record and signature disclosure. Hit continue, start. And as soon as she goes to sign, it pops up. Is this how Betty Byer wants her signature to look? Um, you know, she can always change that, Betty e-buyer, all right, adopt and sign, initial, you see my signature's already on here, she's going to do her, do her thing, right, and we're going to hit finish, and it says, do you want a copy of this email to you, because remember, we never sent it to Betty Byer's email, so if we want to put Betty Byer's email in here, Betty email.com you hit continue continue and now you've just completed those documents with an in-person signing and come on back to our room so um question mm -hmm. sorry so in person means that I'm I'm sitting right next to them. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I just want clarity on it. Okay. Yeah. yeah. No, I know a lot of us aren't like meeting physically with everybody right now. 
but you know this is a general practice, um, especially, you know, one um, huge time that we're going to use this is uh, when you need to just explain um, the terms to somebody maybe who is new to real estate, never did a transaction. So you kind of walk them through it as they're signing. Two, if there is a language barrier, so if you need to translate those uh, documents into, um, you know, their, their preferred or primary language. All right. And uh, then I have my completed Betty Buyer ASD right here. Okay. So you see it's completed and it'll be over here in my right here, affiliate green. Um, so yeah, there are many instances where in-person signing is a really great option. Um, so you're able to do that. Now, if there were multiple people on that, it would just have me keep passing over the controls um, to each person after after Betty signed, then you know, seller Sam needs to sign or whoever else needs to sign after that. Um, it'll just have me as the host keep passing the um, documents over um, and the controls over to the said signer. So husband would go first, sign everything, and then wife would go, vice versa, you know, whatever, whatever that looks like to you and your clients. But um, you cannot assign that um, from within the actual envelope here. So if, again, if I wanted to do that, oops, that's not what I wanted to do. I can't do it from in here in envelopes. Because when I add recipients, all right, or uh, let me just add a, a doc real quick. When I add pre tagged roles, here in more we uh or it needs to sign we do not get that sign in person option we only get receives a copy needs to view or needs to sign so you only get that in the e-signature part so create your envelope like you would you're going to hit save and close it's going to save it as a draft okay you're going to pop on over to your e-signature section All right, manage your, go into the managing of your envelopes. All right, go into drafts because that's what that was. And right here it is. We're going to go ahead and hit continue. And now for Betty, in person signer. All right, now if you didn't need to sign on this, it wouldn't make you obviously sign first. Um, but a lot of these you have to sign yourself as well. So um, I also like to always, um, I personally like to sign, uh, sign my docs second, second to my clients, uh, but some people they just wanna sign their docs before they have their clients signed. So it's up to you whichever order you wanna do that in. All right, so see the long list of different things that we get while we're here in this e-signature portion. Okay. All right, so that is uh, signing in person. Um, the last thing I wanted to just mention to you guys, uh, if you need to make um, big corrections on your documents, say you've sent an envelope, okay? I'm gonna come back to one of my rooms. We're here, say you've sent an envelope, and one or more person signed or at least or even viewed the document and you need to make a correction do not try to correct don't use this correct in here it's just going to um make your life a living nightmare <laughs> 
So what you want to do is you just want to void or delete this envelope. All right, and start a new envelope. So um, you don't want to confuse yourself. Um, so if you have corrections to be made, just eliminate the original envelope and start a new envelope. All right. Also, guys, if you're making uh, corrections before you send the envelope, so say I wanted to add text uh, to a particular document. All right. So I'm putting it into my envelope. This is as if we were going to sign regularly. Add my recipients. Next, we're going to go into the review and say, oh, I forgot I wanted to add a text box um, that said, you know, something important. I can bring a text on text box on over. All right. So whatever say we want to put this, actually, I want to put this on page two. Sorry. All right. I wanted it to also include some sort of other information. Um, over here, you see that only as of right now, only I am looking at this and only I see this. All right. Now, if I switch now, only Betty can see this. All right. Um, so for both of us to be able to see the text, and this would be if you had multiple buyers or sellers on this as well, what we want to do is we want to use collaboration. Recipients can collaborate. Um, and then all signers, oops, that's, yep, all signers, and we're going to make it a read-only option. All right, so now everybody's going to be able to see this because we did, uh, recipients can collaborate, required field for all signers, so it's required that they see it. So right here, because we did this, now if we did this, now they'll be able to change that text box. They'll be able to type in here. We don't want that. We want it as a read only. But when I send this, every person on the contract is going to be able to see this text that I've added. Okay. So again, adding a text box, putting text here. All right, and we can do, you can do them whatever order you want. We want read only. All right, and recipients can collaborate and required for all signers. So, um, oops. And then they're able to see the text here that I put here. All right. And then when I, if I hit recipient preview, Go on over to Betty. See, you can, she can see that text that I put on there. If you don't do that, you run the risk of the other members not seeing the text box when they sign. Okay, so you want to do the collaboration, read only so that they can't change the text. Now, if I were to here, let me just show you really quickly. Not do read only. I did recipient preview. Come on down. Look at look at what happens. They can change this. Be like, um, no commission for my agent. Not that they would do that. But they have abilities then. You don't want that, right? So we want to make sure it is read only. And that way, when your client sees it, they everybody's going to see it, but they can't edit that. Yep, it's not letting, letting me edit it. Okay? Cool. All right. 
So that was uh, the last of my little tips and tricks um, to help you guys um, maneuver documents. I think the biggest one, the biggest takeaway you guys should have is moving your signed docs from room to room. That capability is new. We used to be restricted. Um, you still cannot move forms from room to room. Um, but you can do this for any signed doc. So if you accidentally created um, a separate room and you need to get it into a uh, different one, you can move them. Also, if uh, you're somebody who had a listing and you accidentally put all your buyer docs all in one room, now you have to move your buyer docs to the new opportunity, uh, you'll be able to um, move those to the new room. All right. Let's delete that so I don't have another envelope. All right. Do we have any questions um, about any of the little tricks that we went through? Now, this was recorded, so I will put this back up uh, on my YouTube. Um, but if you guys run into anything, please let me know. That should help you. Those are some of our most commonly asked questions or roadblocks um, from rotating documents, moving documents, um, seeing uh, text boxes uh, in the envelope, but then your clients don't see it. So that collaboration will help you with that. Um, In-person signing is gonna be big and managing all of your envelopes from the e-signature part. Okay. Any last questions before we sign off, guys?